the F-150 EcoBoost engine. It's built to give the F-150 more towing power than any other half ton. It's built to give it more torque than any competitive half ton. It's built Ford Tough. And now we're gonna show the world just what that means. Watch as we take a randomly selected EcoBoost engine and run it through a series of grueling durability tests to prove how tough it is. In medieval times, they had machines like the Rack and the Iron Maiden. Today, we've got this, Dino Cell Block 36D. Here, engineers accelerate wear, replicating 10 years of hard use in 300 hours. And we learn about how our customers use our products. And then we take those and we, and we crank them to the extremes. So we go to the extremes of the temperatures, we go to the extremes of the loads and the speeds that we see. It won't take us 10 years, 150,000 miles. We can do it over the course of, of weeks or months. This dynamometer will simulate towing over 11,000 pounds up a grade steeper than Pikes Peak. The engine fatigue test runs the engine for over an hour at full throttle. And then there's thermal shock testing. It deep freezes the engine to minus 20 degrees, then shocks it to 230 degrees. You're putting a tremendous amount of heat into an engine block that's already very cold. It starts to expand in very bizarre ways. Stresses start to develop in the cylinder block. That's like going from the Arctic to Death Valley in 15 minutes. And they do it over and over and over constantly. There's no way that a customer could replicate the same things that we're doing. There's just no road in the world that they could drive on. There's no way they could get from the temperature extremes as fast as we're doing it. It's just not possible. The different tests cycle one after the other, hour after hour, day after day, for weeks. So we've simulated 150,000 miles on this engine. After we're done here, typically what we would do is tear down the engine, inspect it, make sure everything performed. But in this case, we're going to take it and ship it to Kansas City assembly plant, where it's going to go down the line, just like all the other engines get installed in the truck. Now, after you put an equivalent of 150,000 miles like this on an engine, you might think that's proof enough. But we're just getting started because we're gonna take this same engine out into the real world for some real torture. EcoBoost engine 44-8AA, pulled from the Cleveland production line, stressed to the max for an equivalent of 150,000 miles, then sent to Kansas City to get installed in the F-150. Now, we've driven the same engine another 1,900 miles over the Rocky Mountains to the forest of the Pacific Northwest. This is Nygaard Logging. Their job is to get the logs from the mountain to the mill. For that, they need a skitter. It's heavy machinery. Very big, very powerful. So we got an F-150 pickup. It's gonna try to take place with a skitter today. We got 22 logs, 110,000 pounds in total. You don't have a wheel on it. You're just picking it up and trying to get the end off the ground and just dragging it. So this is an engine that's been through a lifetime of work already, and now we've brought it out here. These guys are probably used to using big V8s and Super Duties. I think they're going to be shocked at how this, this vehicle pulls. You guys, we'll do it, but I think you guys are crazy. <laughs>
over and over, the EcoBoost engine takes off like a shot with its massive low-end torque, dragging over three tons of dead weight up a 10% grade. If three tons doesn't sound like a lot of weight, consider this. Some of these logs outweigh the truck by 1,200 pounds. The EcoBoost engine produces 420 foot-pounds of torque nearly all across its RPM band. Compare that torque curve to Chevy, Dodge, and Toyota V8s, they're not even close. I hear him talking about low-end torque and the type of motor this F-150 has in it, and I'm pretty impressed. It's got all of our 22 logs up the hill, and uh, they're ready to be loaded out for the mill. Hasn't been one log that that truck has not mill. I pull up the hill. 55 tons of timber is loaded onto the hauler and sent off to the mill. For our friends at Nygaard, they can call it a day. But as for the engine, this was just a warm-up. It's back on the road for a 3,300-mile trip to Miami and not for a walk on the beach. EcoBoost engine 448AA, 150,000 miles of dyno stress, then driven 1,900 miles to haul 55 tons of timber. Now it's traveled another 3,300 miles for this. Homestead Miami Speedway, the next dish of agony for our F-150 EcoBoost engine. The plan here today is to be able to show and demonstrate durability and the longevity of uh, this engine. We're hitching up its maximum load, 11,300 pounds. Then we'll tow it at full throttle for 24 hours straight, only stopping for fuel and tire changes. The F-150 reaches speeds approaching 100 miles an hour, revving up to the red line, hours on end, cranking up oil and coolant temperatures beyond what you'd normally get in the real world. At least, not without a Florida State Trooper on your tail. Truck's still running good, all your temperatures look great. He'd come out of the straightaway and roll into that throttle. We'd get a downshift. The engine RPM would jump up 5,000. We'd run 5 to 5,700 RPM full load, just like our durability test. Yeah, full boost. Full boost. The turbos glow cherry red exceeding 200,000 RPM for hours at a time without a break. It's like running a 100-yard dash for an entire marathon. When you come in, we'll get a time check and check the wear. All right, driver, why don't you come on in the pit for the next The engine has averaged over 80 miles an hour pulling its max trailer load of 11,300 pounds for 1,600 miles. That's a distance equal to nearly the entire eastern seaboard. This 24-hour endurance test shows that uh, EcoBoost is really the uh, future. Now, it'll drive another 2,500 miles to the Arizona desert for a grueling uphill race against Ram and Silverado V8s. It started with the dyno, where we put the equivalent of 150,000 miles on the EcoBoost. Then we drove it across the country to drag 55 tons of timber. Then it was down to Florida, 11,300 pounds attached to the back of the F-150 at high speed for 24 hours. What can we possibly do next? Davis Dam, a charming little stretch of road that for about 10 miles does nothing but ascend. 
at a 6% grade. How is the durability going to be proven here on Highway 68? This is a torque sprint. We're going to do a wide open throttle, taking a look at who gets to 60 miles an hour fastest, and then who gets to the top of the hill the fastest, pulling a 9,000 pound trailer. This whole thing just seems patently unfair. I mean, this is a 3.5 liter engine, the EcoBoost is, and Correct. it's going head to head with a 5.7 and a 5.3 liter. You're basically just flooring it full out. EcoBoost engine, it still outperforms the competitors' V8s. The F-150 goes from 0 to 60 about 12 seconds faster than both the Ram and the Silverado. For the entire three and a half mile run, the F-150 still wins. In fact, the F-150 finishes almost 43 seconds faster than the Silverado. Over 160,000 equivalent miles on the EcoBoost. Harsh miles versus both the Chevy and the Ram, uh, which are essentially uh, brand new trucks. This truck has just tremendous torque. For that customer who is in the field working hard, the EcoBoost engine is going to be clearly um, what they are going to be looking for. Or maybe just trying to get up a hill and pass a Chevy Silverado who's pulling a boat, who's essentially standing still. It'd be nice to get around him. Next, we're putting engine 44-8AA into a full-on off-road racer to run the legendary Baja 1000. Tortura, in Spanish for torture. This is Mexico's Baja Peninsula. From up here, it may look like paradise. But down here, where they run the Baja 1000, it's possibly the most treacherous place on Earth. 1,062 miles of engine-choking sand, scorching heat, and jumps. It'll shake apart just about anything. Just finishing the Baja 1000 requires a high-performance engine in perfect running condition. We put engine 44-8AA with the equivalent of 163,000 brutal miles on it into Mike McCarthy's customized off-roader. We're going to put another... 1,072 hard miles on it, the hardest miles. The starting line, Ensenada. The EcoBoost engine powers the F-150 past all stock full trucks. Before long, it passes seven other vehicles at speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Baja pits will be there if you need anything. During refueling, the team suspects something is wrong when the tank only takes 16 gallons. Then they realize the EcoBoost engine is simply using far less fuel than they expected. We were getting over double miles per gallon average what we would normally get. We told them to just skip the last pit stop. It's a game changer, man. McCarthy and the EcoBoost engine have driven through the night and are halfway there. The truck climbs from 100 degree desert heat into the freezing mountains. The abrupt temperature and oxygen changes don't phase the EcoBoost engine. The finish line is within reach. EcoBoost engine 44-8AA roars into La Paz and across the finish line. 
Congratulations, you officially finished the Baja 1000. It's awesome. The engine's running fine. It's ready to go another 165,000 miles. It's overcome 38 hours and 20 minutes of merciless torture. To put that in perspective, of all the vehicles that started the race, a third failed to finish. The Baja 1000 caps the F-150 EcoBoost torture test. Five challenges that subjected this engine to stresses no owner possibly could. Proof that EcoBoost has what it takes and what every truck owner wants. Next, we're bringing EcoBoost engine 44 AA home to get an inside look at how it's held up. EcoBoost engine 44 AA has come home. After 165,000 miles of severe abuse, engineers at Ford will examine this engine part by part to see just how well it held up. First, the engineers put it back on the dynamometer and find the engine, even after all it's been through, is still getting the same horsepower and torque as it did when we first started. It makes torque of uh, 420 foot-pounds at 2,500 RPM and peak power of 365 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, working as good as a brand new engine. It's going to get shipped off to the North American Auto Show where we're going to do a live teardown of this engine. Good morning, everybody. What we're gonna do today is a, is a first for us at an auto show. We're gonna tear this engine down real time and live in front of you all. 24 hours of NASCAR was uh, stressing the, you know, the, all the base engine parts, the turbochargers were spinning up and down. One of the reasons uh, we know this thing is still functioning well, and I know there are a lot of questions about whether these turbos would really live, is like we said before, we brought this back in the dynamometer lab, and we're able to generate the same foot pounds and uh, horsepower, which if this thing wasn't working right, wouldn't have happened. Hauling the logs was really about the low speed torque, really stressed the bottom end of the engine, the crankshaft, the bearings, and the pistons. Crank end play then is just a measure of uh, sort of the actual thrust between the engine and the transmission. So there's a couple of thrust bearings that hold the crank in place. What they're going to measure here is how much wear we have on those thrust bearings. 0.12. 0.12. Still within our new build specification. Another good indication that this engine has a lot of life left in it. That's just extreme torture. You're running the high cylinder pressure, the high oil temps, high coolant temps. On top of that, that engine's getting shaken all over the place in a very, very nasty environment. We need a robust uh, piston to be able to handle all that. We have a uh, molly coat to uh, reduce friction. And that's one of the first things we take a look at on a piston like this is what the wear pattern looks like and how much is gone. And if you can see this, there's uh, really not much of the molly coat gone. We'll go ahead and take the rings and make sure that they spin freely. If the rings get stuck, you're gonna wind up with low compression, low performance, fuel economy suffers, as well as uh, oil consumption would go up. This piston looks great. Last thing that we're gonna have a look at is condition of the cylinder bores. We'll uh, measure the bore and actually measure the wear. When you go ahead and look through this bore, all the cross hatches there, the cross hatch is critical for oil consumption. You want some oil on the cylinders to lubricate the rings going up and down in the piston, but you wanna be able to control it. And really looking at this thing, it looks great. And uh, you guys will be able to come up here and take a look yourselves. So that's the teardown. Feel free to come up, take pictures, and just ask any questions you have. So thank you very much for participating, and thanks for being part of it. Hundred fifty thousand miles on the dyno. Four additional torture episodes. The engine is still in its new build specifications, so we could easily get another hundred fifty thousand miles out of it. It took Ford engineers less than 35 minutes to tear down EcoBoost engine 44 AA, something 165,000 miles of torture couldn't do. We're here at the mounds with the Ford F-150. We're going to have some fun and get this thing dirty. The terrain looks pretty rough, so we've tested it on the track already. We've tested it on the road. Now it's a chance to see what it can do off-road and show people how much fun you can have with the truck. Ready, back in, snap, power. So we've 
use this Ford F-150 with the EcoBoost engine. We've thrown tires in the back. We've done fuel economy runs. We've taken through slalom, good quarter mile runs, skid pad. But I will tell you, nothing is as fun as this. We got stuck. And even in four wheel drive low, it just wasn't going. The back end wanted to slip and the front end, we were stuck right here on a big pile of mud. So we couldn't get any grip from the front end, but it had the electronic locking differential. Kick that in, powered right out. Out, power on, power. Get that Ford Taurus SHO, even though it's a badass car, I'm getting this thing. The right amount of power, right amount of torque, the steering feels good, it's active, it's responsive. It gave me a pretty comfortable ride. I'm a little sore, my neck's a little sore, but other than that, I'm good to go. Let's do it again. The mounds, this place, you look at it and you're like, oh, that place is going to be like hell. But you come out in a vehicle like this and it's a blast. The truck proved that it's got tons of power, tons of capability beyond just what we've already tested before, beyond hauling and towing and fuel efficiency. It's just fun. No, this is not Aston Martin's entry into the small luxury segment. This is actually the Ford Fusion for 2013. It's been completely redesigned, and as you can see, it's been designed by the same guy that is responsible for all the modern Aston Martin looks, so it's really no surprise that the front end of this Fusion looks like a baby Aston Martin. But does that continue on to the interior? Let's hop in and take a look. Before we go into what you will find under the hood of the Fusion, let's talk about what you won't find. You won't find a V6 at any price point in the new Fusion. That's because this is a strictly four-cylinder offering now. Our base engine is a 2.5-liter, 175-horsepower inline four-cylinder engine, naturally aspirated, of course, and we probably expect that to find homes mostly with fleet customers. This other engine, which we have here, is an $800 option. It's a 1.6-liter turbo engine. It's one of the smallest engines that Ford has ever sold in America, and now it's here in a mid-sized sedan. This engine produces 178 horsepower, but most importantly, it produces 184 pound-feet of torque, which is more than the 175 pound-feet of torque in the base 2.5-liter engine. Not just that, however, it produces all that torque at a lowly 2,500 RPM, meaning that this car feels much peppier than that base 2.5-liter engine. It's also more usable, really, than that 2.5-liter engine. There's also a 240 horsepower 2-liter turbo engine, as well as a hybrid drivetrain system, which is fairly similar to the outgoing hybrid system. All three non-hybrid engines are equipped with the same six-speed automatic transmission, and that 2-liter turbo can be had with all-wheel drive as well. Our 1.6-liter tester scores 23 mpg in the city and 36 on the highway. As you would expect from a mid-sized sedan these days, the Fusion's interior is very well put together. We really were unable to find a seam out of place or a plastic that had gone wrong in this interior, which really is saying something for Ford because the last Fusion, while very competitive, did have some questionable parts inside. Now, unless you buy the base trim Fusion with the cloth seats, you're pretty much relegated to this black on black on black interior, and it is a little bit sterile, if I'm honest. Uh, on the flip side, it's also very Germanic, because uh, if you're familiar with Volkswagen and BMW's offerings, a lot of their offerings tend to be very black on black on black heavy. Our tester is equipped with the 8-inch navigation system and this touch-sensitive button bank, which adds to that clean and possibly a little bit sterile look. This is quite different than Nissan's new Altima, which has a tan dashboard option. And while some thought it looked a little bit rental car-ish, I thought it looked a little bit warmer than this black interior. Uh 